Good evening and welcome to the Farmington Patriotic Day celebration. I'm Josh Wilson and a senior at FHS and president of the student body. A few things that I'm involved in here at FHS are cross country, track, student council, national honor society, and choir. Um, and tonight I will be your master of ceremony. I'm aware of the many, many veterans joining us tonight and to which I thank you for your service. Both of my grandpas on each side of my family are veterans of the U.S. Army. One, of my, one is my grandpa, Howell Johnson, who is now with me in spirit, and one is here tonight, my grandpa, Paul Wilson. Um, at this time, I would like to recognize my grandpa for your service. Please stand. If you joined us for dinner tonight, we would like to thank you. According to Ronald Reagan, all great change in America begins at the dinner table. The 2017 Patriotic Day celebration recognizes all of the men and women who have served our country in the U.S. military. This year, the Patriotic Committee selected the theme of patriotism. Merriam-Webster defines patriotism as love or for or devotion for one's country. As we open this evening's ceremony, we invite you to stand, remove your headwear, and place your hand over your heart for the presentation of the colors provided by the Combined Color Guard of the American Legion Post 189 and Farmington VW Post 7662. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be or er, please remain standing with your hand over your heart while the Farmington High School Wind Ensemble, un under the direction of Miss Erin Holmes and vocalist Caroline Cummings, lead us in our national anthem, the Star-Spangled Banner.
Please be seated. This evening, we are pleased to have Congressman Jason Lewis, who represents the second district in the 115th Congress. Prior to serving in Congress, he had a 20-year career in broadcasting. Please welcome Jason, please welcome Congressman Jason Lewis, who brings us greetings from Washington, D.C., as he shares what patriotism means to him. Wow, what a crowd. Thank you so much, Farmington. Thank you for inviting me here today. It is such an honor to join you for this occasion, and I am so impressed. Thank you all for coming out today to help celebrate our country and those who serve it. With Veterans Day tomorrow, today's focus on patriotism is very, very fitting. My father served in World War II, and I remember watching both my brothers leave to serve in Vietnam. I also remember how our returning Vietnam veterans did not receive the welcome home that they deserved for their sacrifices. We as a country cannot repeat those mistakes again, and I don't think we will. It is vitally important that our nation's veterans and those currently serving know that we are standing steadfastly behind all of them, that we will continue to stand with them when they return home to their communities across this great land. Veterans are our friends, our relatives, our businessmen and women, our neighbors, our co-workers, firefighters, our policemen and women. They are our kids' baseball coaches, and they are our Boy Scout leaders. They are the people we know, and they are the people we may never meet. The only reason we enjoy the freedom and liberty and safety that we do today is because of the sacrifice of our veterans. The reason that America continues to be the land of the free and the home of the brave is because of these veterans. They have taken on their shoulders the burden of war to give our children a safer and freer world. They left behind their families, stood with their comrades on the field of battle. Our servicemen and women have known the hardships and the fears and the tragic losses of war. Yet they are preserved, they, did, they persevere, excuse me, in the harshest hours of their conflicts, recognizing that they pursued a just and noble cause. For those of you here who have served, I want to personally thank you for your service and your sacrifice and for all that you have done and all that you will do. And I also want to thank the families. Thank you to the Blue and Gold Star families for the sacrifices you've made. And I would be remiss if I didn't also thank the keynote speaker tonight, Brigadier General Denny Schulstead. His record of service is truly impressive. In fact, in addition to being a veteran, he served on the Minneapolis City Council for a number of years. And that is a record of service in many, many ways. So while we celebrate our men and women in uniform today, and we serve as a celebration, tonight's event couldn't be a better spectacle. You know, there's been a lot of focus on things that divide us in Washington, but understand, we can all come together when we honor our veterans. The headlines in the news make it seem like our country is irreversibly divided. Well, I disagree, and tonight is evidence of that. Beyond the headlines, I know that many of you would be surprised to learn how we work together in Washington. This is my first year in Washington, D.C., serving in the 115th, and I can tell you the majority of legislation we have passed out of the House of Representatives has passed with bipartisan support of Democrats and Republicans. The vast majority of bills we pass we do under something called suspension, where both parties support it. Just this week, I introduced with my Democratic colleague from Virginia, Congressman Bobby Scott, a bill on criminal justice reform called the Safe Justice Act and will make huge strides to fix our broken criminal justice system by breaking the cycle of recidivism. It also ensures that veterans, especially those coming back from conflicts, those suffering from PTSD, receive the treatment and fair sentencing that takes into account their circumstances and sacrifice. And this is not the first time I've worked with Congressman Scott. We also passed a bill earlier this session called the Juvenile Justice Bill. So I highlight this to show you that while we all have our differences in this very, very tough circumstance right now politically, we can come together 
and we can work together to better our communities and tonight honor our veterans. And that's what this is about, coming together to celebrate the freedoms we enjoy as Americans. American patriotism is unique. It is not just a reverence for our wonderful symbols, but it is a reverence for the ideal of liber liberty behind those symbols. That's what makes us Americans. It's so easy to take our government for granted, our Constitution for granted, but ours was born in a time of crisis when the very existence of the United States was called into question. The loyalists outnumbered the revolutionaries. The idea that a nation could be built on the proposition of all men and women and children having the right to life, liberty, and property was threatened right from the beginning. But our founders, like our veterans, persevered and the Constitution of the United States has endured for over two centuries. So tonight, let us reflect upon our country's founding, its ideals, and how they still ring true today. Let me just thank everyone again for this wonderful celebration and this wonderful turnout and this wonderful community. And let me thank finally one more time all of the men and women who we celebrate tonight, our veterans. Thank you all. Thank you, Congressman Jason Lewis, for being a patriot and serving us in D.C. We continue our program tonight with Glory Hallelujah, the Saints Go Marching In, performed by the men of FHS Choir under the direction of Brian Onsord. Enjoy. Tonight, we welcome the Farmington High School Social Studies teacher, John Holmes, who will, you, who will tell you a bit about the Farmington's VFW's Voice of Democracy contest. Mr. Holmes, will you please? Oh, Mr. Holmes? Okay. <laughs> All right. Mr. Holmes, will you please introduce the winner of the Farmington VFW Voice of Democracy contest? Yes. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, Thank you, Congressman, for giving the welcome tonight. Uh, I think that was appropriate for all of our veterans and all of our active military to hear words from you. And it's nice to have a Congressman uh, recognize this wonderful event. It's nights like this that make me really proud to have been born, raised, 
and living and working here uh, in Farmington, I see many faces out here that I have come across over the years. I see former classmates, I see neighbors, uh, I see teachers that I had in class, I see obviously teachers that I work with now, and um, it's just amazing that we all come together on a night like tonight to really take a look at the things that matter in life and celebrate those that have protected that for us. And so it's my great pleasure tonight to uh, give you a glimpse into what Farmington's future is. And I get to see it every day at the high school here, which is a great privilege of mine. But it's wonderful any time that we can get our students out in front of the community. And I think Farmington does an amazing job with that. We have the band at almost every single event that I've ever been at. Um, we have all sorts of sports and clubs and activities. And the community is intertwined in all that. And it's nice to have the kids get in front of you as often as we possibly can. And so it's with great pride tonight that I'm able to introduce to you uh, the Voice of Democracy winner. And the Voice of Democracy is a scholarship program that's put on by the VFW, and it's been going on since 1947. And every year we get a, over 100,000 students that compete for about $3 million worth of scholarships. And this year, at Farmington alone, we had 97 freshmen that partook in the contest. And it's a 9 through 12 uh, contest. So it's, it's neat that we have freshmen that uh, usually are our biggest participants in this thing. Every year they take a speech and they put it around a theme, and this year's theme was American history, our hope for the future. And so tonight we have Farmington High School's winner, and she's going to remind you just how much hope there actually is for our future. So please welcome ninth grader Anna Erbach. I've always been the kind of person who likes to know what's going on. Not in the way that I need to know everything, but enough where I'm able to explain things if someone else does not. I like to know what's going on in our world, in our country. This is one thing that many, including myself, take for granted because I know not everyone, I know not everyone has given this right. But recently, through watching the news and reading articles, I have found that something our country and world struggle very heavily with right now is equality. Whether it's between genders, race, or religion, it needs more attention. Our country has overcome so much in the past to address this issue. Many people knew from the beginning that treating others differently because of their appearance or origin was inhumane and it was wrong. Some people took a little longer to come to that realization for a variety of reasons. The point is, our country decided to be different. We wanted to welcome anyone and everyone to come live here. We wanted to be a safe place for those who wanted the rights they knew they should have but didn't. That's what we wanted, so we went out and demanded it as a reality for everyone. America was this hope for a paradise, a place where you could come and be accepted for who you were. At least, that's what I thought we were. But if everyone is equal, why do I have to sit down and watch the news only to be reminded of how unfairly we treat each other? There shouldn't be acts of violence against a group. People shouldn't have to protest continuously to call attention to the problem and then be told they shouldn't be protesting. If we know everyone is equal, why can't we act like it? I hate to break it to you, but you aren't any better than the person right next to you, no matter what they look like, how they dress, the stories you've heard about them, where they came from, what classes they take. It doesn't matter if someone's a different race, a different gender, works a different job, practices a different religion, it doesn't matter. Because in the end, we're all people, and that doesn't change. Not only does our Constitution say we're equal, but so do most people's religions and beliefs. On December 6th, 1865, the 13th Amendment was ratified. The lives of many were forever changed. Slavery was abolished. And finally, African Americans were given hope from this constant fear of being bought or sold or worked to exhaustion. They were free to go live their own lives. February 3rd, 1870, the 15th Amendment was ratified and stated that African Americans were allowed to vote. 
They were finally on the same platform as everyone else. They were supposed to be treated like everyone else, treated with equality. August 18th, 1920, the 19th Amendment was ratified and made it possible for women to vote. It took over 100 years of hard work to gain that one vote, that one right. These three amendments made history. They changed the way of life for many. And even though these amendments state that people are equal in one way or another, this country hasn't always been the greatest at implementing our ideals and following through with them. Whether you've encountered this already or are waiting still, it will come. It might be at work or at school or on a sports team or an extracurricular activity, but it'll come. It's inevitable because this world is not perfect. In fact, we're quite far from it. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to make this world better. And if things are great for ourselves, we should still make it better for others. Just think back to the time you were truly treated unfairly because of something you couldn't control, something that made you, you. Or if that hasn't come yet, try and picture what it'd be like for you or your children in the future. I would throw a good sum of money out there just to bet that the feeling that came to your mind wasn't a good one. So now use that feeling as a motive to make this country better for someone else, to spare them the pain. Just one little act of kindness, or maybe it's even keeping your personal thoughts about someone or group of people to yourself if they aren't positive. It can make a world of difference. So if everyone naturally began to do this or had this mindset, we'd be making significant progress in the eyes of equality. Maybe someday our country will struggle a little less with this. Maybe someday our country will be a little kinder. Maybe someday our country will be a little more equal. All it takes is one person to call out someone's ignorance or to silence their own. One person to stop a little hate from entering this world. That person could be you. It could be all of us. And it's up to us to be that person. Thank you. Thank you, Anna Erbach. Next, we welcome Mr. Holmes back to the podium to assist with our next musical piece. Uh, active military members and retired military members, we are going to honor you now uh, with your song. And so this is the Armed Forces Salute. When you hear your song for your branch, please stand and we can give you some recognition. Under the direction of the lovely Miss Erin Holmes, <laughs> the Wind Ensemble will perform the Armed Salute. The United States Army, the Kaesong Song.
the United States Coast Guard. The U.S. Marines and the Marines Hymn. United States Air Force. United States Navy. As quoted by Barack Obama, we the people recognize that we have responsibilities as well as rights, that our destinies are bound together, that a freedom which only asks what's in it for me, a freedom without a commitment to others, a freedom without love or charity or duty or patriotism, is worthy of our founding ideals and those who died in their defense. Being patriotic is in our next speaker's DNA. Retired United States Air Force Brigadier General Dennis Schulstead spent his career serving not only our nation, but our state and local community. In addition to his service in the U.S. Air Force, General Schulstead spent 22 years as a member of the Minneapolis City Council. Currently, he continues his patriotic service, serving on several boards and commissions. General Schulstead continues to give over 50 speeches each year and is supported by his greatest fan and love of his life, Pam Schulstead. They have been married for 48 years. Please welcome back to Farmington, General Schulstead. Well, thank you. This wind ensemble is so good. I thought I was in orchestra hall. When I was in high school, Roosevelt High School in Minneapolis, we were so bad <laughs> that when we played a song, if the audience knew what song we were playing, we considered it a success. <laughs> I was honored to be here a few years ago and talked to the students and I was so impressed with Farmington and what you do to honor veterans and to honor America. 
We live in a great nation, a great, great nation. It's really an experiment in democracy and freedom. It's been operating for about 240 years. We, um, we don't know how long it will last. It could end at any time. It almost did end in World War II. Had Nazi Germany defeated the United States, we wouldn't be here right now, and we wouldn't be celebrating Patriotism Day or Veterans Day. Is it a perfect country? Of course not. We have a lot of problems, and all you have to do is turn on the television or read the newspaper, and you will see that we have many problems but people like Congressman Lewis will be working to repair many of them. However, when people complain about our country, I don't see anybody getting on a one-way airplane trip or ship to leave our nation, but I sure see millions of people around the world who do anything, including risking their lives, to move into this country. Have any of you ever bought a lottery ticket? Raise your hand if you bought a lottery ticket. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Did any of you win? Every single person in this room won the lottery because you live in the United States of America. You have won the lottery. Well, why are we here today? Why are we celebrating Veterans Day? Reading the paper this morning, all of the advertising inserts in there, I realize this is a good day to uh, buy a hot tub, buy a mattress, get 10% off in a lot of department stores. But on Saturday, we celebrate Armistice Day. That was the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month that ended World War I. Remember, that was the war that was going to end all wars. If only that had been the case. But unfortunately, in our history, even though we are a peace-loving nation, we've had to fight almost a dozen wars. Some of them were controversial. Some of them were for our very existence, like World War II. So that has changed from Armistice Day to Veterans Day. Veterans Day when we recognize, honor, and thank all of the people who have sacrificed many of them sacrificing their lives to defend this nation. And you've gone even one step further in Farmington because here it is Patriotic Day, not just Veterans Day. And that makes me so proud to see you doing this. Because it's the military defending our nation but it's the law enforcement people and the firefighters, the people who risk their lives to defend our nation and also to be sure that the citizens are safe. And when we think about it, that is really the primary goal, the primary role of our government. We want our government to build highways and bridges. We want them to provide social security. We want them to do all kinds of things in Minneapolis. Oh, and by the way, I'm not on the city council any longer. I wouldn't win an election in Minneapolis today. Our job was to pick up the garbage, make sure the streets were plowed. And we didn't all do a very good job of that. But the number one role of our government is to provide national defense which protects our country 
and to provide safety so our citizens are safe. And that's what you're doing on a day like this is honoring and thanking those people who provide those services for you. We can look back in history. Every civilization, as far back as we can see, has been conquered by somebody. Some other nation has conquered every civilization. We've been here for 240 years. We expect it to last forever. We hope it will. But we just don't know. We just don't know. And that's why we have to have a very strong national defense. We, um, we look at all of these men and women who defend our nation, who are on our police forces, law enforcement, who are firefighters, and these are all people who volunteer. Nobody has ever been told they have to be a police officer, a military person, or a firefighter. They do it, they risk their lives to protect us. And many of those people who risk their lives die doing it. Or sometimes they come home missing an arm, missing a leg, or missing part of their brain. And every single one of them, while they're risking their lives, many in a, some godforsaken country, someplace around the world, they're all missing holidays. They're missing their families. They're missing weddings. They're living a terrible life while they're gone. I'll tell you about people in Iraq right now. It can be 110 degrees. You're carrying backpacks that weigh about 70 pounds. If you want to cool off, you don't go to the cooler and get a nice beer or a lemonade. Instead, you're carrying it on your back. Some foul-tasting water. It's lukewarm. You reach back and you get a straw and you can cool off that way. And these are volunteers. And they're dodging landmines, they're dodging any type of explosives that could kill them or injure them for life. And they're volunteers. And 20% of these volunteers are women. And they're all young. And when I go to a military cemetery, such as the one in Normandy, and you go among the headstones there, and you find that this person was 18 years old, 20 years old, 21, 19. These are our heroes. Remember to 9-11, when the airplanes flew into the Twin Towers. And the Twin Towers were in danger of falling down, and eventually they did. And we all watched on television as people were panicked and running away. Except so, not everybody was running away. There were a lot of firefighters in New York who were running toward the buildings, risking their lives to try to help other people get away. And many of those firefighters died. And when we look at terrorist attacks, such as happened in Boston with the bombs at the marathon. We saw people running, hiding, except for the fire, except for the police officers and the law enforcement people. They were running toward the danger. They weren't running away. Oh, did I mention these are all volunteers? Nobody has to do that, but they do. We call a lot of people heroes. A lot of athletes, 
a lot of entertainers, multimillionaires. We call them heroes. They're not heroes. They're not heroes. The real heroes are the young men and women, our military people, our firefighters, our police officers, our people who are protecting us. Those are the role models. When I watch on television and I see somebody taking a knee during the national anthem, number one, I'm ashamed. But then I stop and think. They have the right to do that because other people have given their lives to give them that right. But they shouldn't be taking a knee. They should be kneeling on both knees, thanking God that they are able to live in this nation and have the opportunities that they do have. As I said, this is a great nation. So whenever I worry about America, worry about the future, because remember, most of what you see on television and what you read in the paper are the bad things that are happening. I talked to reporters one time about that, and I, I asked them, why do you only report the bad? Why aren't you reporting good things? And they said, we report the things that are unusual. Once good becomes unusual, then we will report it. Well, I have news for them. We aren't going to make good unusual. It's right here in this room. This is good. This is good. This is what America is all about, and that's why our future is so bright. So how can we thank? How can we thank these people who risk their lives for us? And I'll give you just a couple of examples. One of them is beyond the Yellow Ribbon Program. It's so strong here in this area. It has started in Minnesota, and it's now a nationwide program. You should be very, very proud of that. We have another program called the Minnesota Military Appreciation Fund. We have raised $17 million. Every young man or woman from Minnesota who has served in a combat area after 9-11 gets a check for $500 and a letter of appreciation. We have given away 14,000 of those grants. This is the only state in America doing this. We should be very proud of that. The Minnesota Military Family Foundation has raised $6 million. We get a lot of that money when you buy a license plate that says support our troops. This is one where if a family is in need of some financial help because of their military service, this is the organization to help them. And I'll give you an example. A note would come in and it would say, my husband is deployed. He is a reservist. Normally, he makes about $50,000 a year. Right now, he's making 30000 while he's overseas, deployed. The car broke. I need $1,200 to repair it, and I don't have the $1,200. That evening, somebody will knock on that door, hand them a $1,200 check, and say, thank you for being a military family. There's no obligation whatsoever to repay it. We are the only state in America doing that. We can be very proud. And there's one other program. It's called Minnesota 100. That is a program where many, many people are contributing $100 a year each to a fund, and it's called Protect the Protectors. And what happens is any time a firefighter or a police officer dies in the line of duty, somebody knocks on their door, gives them their sincere sympathy, and hands them a check for $10,000. Thank you for being a protector of all of us. It's the least we can do. So that's why a program like this, 
is so important. Because what you're doing is you're showing appreciation. You're showing people that you really do care, that you really do appreciate what our protectors and what our military have been doing to take care of us. You have made me very, very proud, and thank you for allowing me to be here this evening. Gen thank you, General Schulstead, for your continued patriotic service. Some of our patriots paid the ultimate sacrifice. Thomas Jefferson said, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Next on our program, Connor McCarthy and Jacob Johnson will present TAPS. Written in 1862 during the Civil War, TAPS has become the standard at military funeral ceremonies. Of all the military calls, none is so easily recognizable and prone to render recognition as TAPS. Please stand. Thank you, and please be seated. Patriotism can mean different things depending on one's age, experiences, and wisdom. Mark Twain said, patriotism is supporting your country all the time and your government when it deserves it. The following are some Farmington citizens' thoughts on patriotism, filmed and edited by Mark Tauchi. Patriotism, uh, that's a, a very interesting subject. Uh, if you ask me, uh, I think patriotism begins with uh, one's love, support, and defense uh, of a country. It can be emotional, uh, it can be engaging, uh, depending on your values, your, your culture, or where you were when. Uh, for example, uh, a World War II veteran uh, of the greatest generation might express patriotism uh, differently than, say, a, a veteran from the uh, Korean conflict or the Vietnam era or uh, even the Gulf War. In my mind, uh, it all comes down to love of country and the gratitude uh, to those who before, came before us uh, who have uh, paved the way for our uh, continued freedom. So I guess that's what patriotism is to me. I think patriotism is being loyal to one's country. For us, that means the USA. My grandpa was in the Navy and proudly served our great nation in the Korean War. When I look at him, I feel proud of our veterans. Patriotism means a veteran saluting our flag, saying the Pledge of Allegiance before school, or those who are serving our country. To us, patriotism means loving and supporting our country. Here's one quote we believe shows patriotism. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country, spoken by President JFK. We believe this quote means we need to put others and our community before ourselves. We are so thankful for our veterans because they fought for our freedom. Because of them, we can live the life we wanted. The dictionary defines patriotism as love or devotion to one's country. And I can honestly say I do love my country. I would always want to live in the United States of America. It's not just loving a country blindly though, and it's not loving everything your country does. Patriotism means, to me, supporting the people of your country, working to make it better. Patriotism is trying to make your country the best that it can be. 
My name is Andy Derner. I'm a veteran uh, from the Korean War and I was uh, asked by Dr. Geis to say a little about patriotism here this evening. And uh, of course I want to say that all the veterans are very patriotic and they deserve a lot of credit. But I also want to add the patriotism that uh, we're getting out of this meeting here tonight. And I especially enjoy the song that the uh, first graders sing, this land is my land, this land is your land. And I think there's a lot of patriotism right there. And uh, if you listen to the song, they, they tell about how great this state is. This land is my land, this land is your land, this land is yours, yours and mine. And so we share it, we should share it. And uh, I don't know if we share it as good as we should, but uh, I'm very happy they sing this song. And the teachers that uh, teach these uh, young people how to, or to sing this song, when you get 200 kids or so, or whatever the number is, they do such a perfect job of uh, hitting the notes at the same time. I just, I'm just very happy about it. And I congratulate you and I congratulate the teachers for uh, helping us uh, enjoy this evening program of patriotism. Patriotism is a great thing, and uh, I think a lot of us don't think that much about it. And I guess I didn't either until I got involved with uh, helping to put on this program. And uh, I, I just want to thank the, the high school band for the work that they do. That's all patriotic work. And it's just, it's just an enjoyable evening. It's an evening to learn. It's an evening to say to each other, thank you and enjoy life. And see you again next year. Next up. Next on our program are two numbers by the, a combined choir of fourth grade students from all of the elementary schools in District 192. The choir is under the direction and accompaniment of the five elementary school music specialists. Please welcome the fourth grade choir as they present, Thank You Soldiers and This Is Your Land.
Thank you members of the fourth grade choir and thank you to all the musicians who participated in this evening's celebration. Our closing remarks will be made this evening by Farmington School District 192 Superintendent Jay Haugen. Please welcome Superintendent Haugen. Wonderful to see you all here tonight. Once again, I have the honor of being the filler between the fourth grade choir and the wind ensemble. So. It uh, has been a wonderful evening. Congressman Lewis reminded us, no matter our differences, we all, came, we all come together to honor our veterans. For they are the only reason we are here today, a people today, through their service, their sacrifice. Next, Anna Erbach reminded us of the importance of equality in the formation of us as a people, of the struggles this has required and continues to require. And while the world is not perfect, each of us can make a difference and has a role in making the world a better place through kindness and the actions we take. Finally, General Schulstedt reminds us that while we, of course, are not perfect and have our problems, people around the world risk their lives to come to this country. We won the lottery just by being here. And even though we are a peace-loving country, we have had to fight 12 wars to defend our nation. For the primary role of our government is to provide national defense and safety. We call a lot of people heroes who are not heroes. It is our young men and women in the military, along with those who keep us safe, who are the real heroes. So let me congratulate once and recognize our real heroes, our military and those who keep us safe here at home. Thank you for your service. ask you to please stand, remove headwear, and place your hand over your heart for the retiring of colors. Oh. First, this, the wind ensemble will play a song, and then we will retire the colors. Thank you.
Now please remain standing, <laughs> remove your headwear, and place your hand over your heart for the retiring of colors. On behalf of the Farmington Patriotic Committee, we thank you for joining us tonight and showing your patriotism. Enjoy our last selection, God Bless America, with soloist Mr. Brian Onsord. the storm clouds gather far across the sea let us swear allegiance 
to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn Land that I love Stand beside her And guide her Through the night With the light from above From the mountains To the prairies to the ocean white with foam God bless America my home sweet home God bless America Land that I love Stand beside her And guide her Through the night With the light from above From the mountains To the prairies To the ocean White with foam God America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Thank you, Mr. Ollensorg. I would like to leave you with one last message. With Veterans Day being this Saturday, I encourage you all to thank a veteran and show your patriotism. I will leave you with this. Quoted from President George W. Bush, the best hope for peace in our world is the expansion of freedom in all of the world. Thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your evening.